Thank you for introduction. Hello, everyone. Good morning. Welcome to my talk. And uh, there, I'm glad to share our work about the fuzzing state for system. It's a joint work with myself, Moon from Mass Planck in the Institute, Dara Mizer Moon from National University, and uh, I B Grohe from National University of Singapore. Stateful system. It requires a specific sequence of events as inputs to perform expected behaviors. The final result depends on the entire sequence of inputs, not any single input. For example, here, if we're executing the input sequence one, two, three, and executing the input three only, we cannot get exactly the same result. If a bug can be exposed only in a certain state, which means the system requires a specific sequence of inputs that would take it into the, this state, we call it a stateful bug. So our problem here is that we want to know how to efficiently find a stateful bugs. The major challenge to solve this uh, goal is that without the specification of the required environment, sequence, uh, that's to say the state specification, how do we cover the state space? The prior words cannot solve this problem. FL, FL lib father, they are conventional fathers, but they are stateless and they cannot generate the sequence of inputs in specific orders. FLNet, it tried to use the return code as the state, but the return code is a special field in the protocol and it cannot represent the program internal states. Each join it requires human knowledge, which is the state specification. All of them have some limitation, cannot solve this challenge. Stateful programs are prevalent. In this work, we focus on protocol implementations which are internet fiffing and any bug has a severe security impact. Here is an example for HTTP2 protocol. In this protocol, an uh, HTTP request is split into several frames and all frames have to be received in specific order. Let's suppose there is a stateful bug which may appear after correctly processing the data frame after the header frame. If we only send the data frame or header frame, it's impossible to expose this bug. And then if we send the header frame and data frame in correct order, in this time, no new code coverage is covered, but a new state is observed. If we can save and continue find this newly find input, it's more easier to find the state for bug. How do we know which states have been visited? Our main observation is that states are represented by state variables with named constants. For example, the H2O the implements the HTTP2 protocol states into the enumeration variable, like the firstly in the idle and then enter the receive header, receive body, and then send back. And OpenSL implements the TLS protocol into the enumeration variables also. Is observation prevalent? We also investigated the top 50 protocol implementations, including 16 protocols, and all of them define the states by the named constants. 44 of them use the enumeration variables and uh, the six use the micro definitions. Let's see how the state variables control the program behaviors. In H2O, the implementation of HTTP2 protocol, the protocol states are implemented into the state variable stream state to control the receive order of the frames. Function one and three uh, handle function for header frame and data frame. And the function two is called in function one, function four is called in function three. In this situation, if we send a data frame only, then the function three will be called to handle it. Well, the state variables, the red line, the state variables doesn't equal to the correct value. Function four won't be executed. 
But when we send the header frame before the data frame, function one is firstly called to handle the data frame, and the function two is called in function one to set the state variable into the correct value, the receive body. And then when we send data frame, it can correctly to execute the function four. It is a state transition that happens by assigning new value to the state variable. Therefore, to cover or reach function four, the specific order of inputs with header frame and data frame is necessary. So our insight is that we can approximate the state variables by the name variables with name constants. Of course, some variables identified in this way are not state variables, such as the configuration or error codes, but their impact is negligible. In our evaluation, the accuracy of this method is over 99%. Based on this insight, we modify the conventional fuzzy algorithm to fuzz the stateful systems. We add a new feedback state transition tree to collect the recovered state space. And based on this tree, we add several heuristic algorithms to boost the state space fuzzing. Firstly, let's look into the state transition tree. In fuzzing, we monitor the changes of values of enumeration variables. Here is uh, the example for monitoring the state variable stream state in H2O, the same example. Initially, the state transition tree is empty. If we execute an input, the variable may be set to these values one by one, such like the idle header receive body. We get the state transition sequence like this, and we put it to the tree. And then when we execute another input, we may get a different state transition sequence, and then we merge it to the tree again. Again, again, we get more branch in this tree and got, got this finally state transition tree. Okay, after we get the state transition tree, is it meaningful? To better understand it, we revise it to a graph by merging the same nodes with the same value. Let's compare it with the official state machine document, the RFC document. Firstly, the document defines idle state, and we can see we, all, we also have the idle state. And then it defines open state. And then here in our, in our tree or graph, we have a more fine grain state sequence. We still have a receive body, they also mean the open state to the document. And then the document defines half close, which we have a similar body is final. And then finally, it all have the closed state. Comparing with the official document, we can see our state transition tree is uh, meaningful to represent the protocol document state machine. After constructing the state transition tree, we added several heuristic algorithms to boost the state space explanation. Firstly, we want to explore more state space. So therefore, any inputs that trigger new state transition, we will save it and uh, to continue fuzz it. Our second heuristic is to we want to fuzz, put more effort on the core logic, which have a great potential to find new states and bars. Because we found that not all state transitions are equally important. In this case, the left three state transitions are for error handling. It means the input is invalid and the execution is exit at the beginning. We don't want to put more effort on this. But the right hand is the core logic, which represents input invalid, and we want to test it thoroughly. Our observation here is that we found that inputs which excite the core logic state transitions are easily to be mutated to the inputs which excite the error handling state transitions. It's because any byte change on the valid input will make it invalid. So based on this, we, for each input, we record the number of input mutated from it and the number of mutated input that still excite the same state sequence. 
If the value is bigger, it's more likely to the core logic. The last one, we use partial mutation to make the mutation more efficiently. For example, the input has several bytes. If we mutated the fifth byte, we trigger a new state transitions. And after that, we will put more effort to mutate this part. It's because all the previous bytes can take the program into the newly found state transitions, which haven't been tested thoroughly. Therefore, we want to put more effort to only test it. We call our father uh, SG fuzz, stick reboot fuzz, and build it on top of lib fuzz. The reason is that uh, the lib fuzz is much faster than FL, the in memory architecture, than the fork architecture. In implementation, we automatically look for the assignment to the enumeration variables and instrument it with our function by a Python script. Like this, we look for this line. It assigns a numeration a constant, a name constant to the enumeration variables, and we rewrite it to in this line and a function call. This function call is implemented in our father. Our father and target program are compiled together and running in the same process, so they can directly to call each other by the function call. And our father is built on top of libfast with some uh, state tracing and uh, state fuzzing algorithm. In evaluation, we chose eight widely used protocol implementations onto major frameworks, FuzzBunch and uh, ProtoFuzzBunch. All experiments comply community standards, 23 hours and 20 runs. The first question we want to answer is that how will we exploit the state space? So we measure the number of state transition sequence in the state transition tree. Most state transition sequence mean most states are exploited. From the result on average, our method counts state transition sequence 30 times more than our baseline lib fast, and also much higher than the AFLNet and the AJOL. Since we use enumeration variables or name constant to approximate the state's variables, we want to examine how accurate it is. So therefore, we exam, manually examine the all nodes in this structure state transition tree, and we found that 99.5% uh, nodes are related to the tree true states. Of course, we found the 12 previously annual bus in 23 hours. All of them have been assigned CVEs. The conclusion, we, in this work, we propose a novel method to identify the program state automatically. And uh, we also design several heuristic algorithms to exploit the state space. With this method, we found 12 newly found bus and previously annual bus. Thank you. Any questions?